Hello, everybody. All right, we have a Blue Knight Rubber Stamp stamp called Land and Sea. The sentiment says he is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. Um, very cool for especially everything that's going on in the world right now. But I really like this sea theme. I think I'm going to stamp and color this um, without the sentiment this time around. I do have some Arteza watercolor paper here. It's already cut down actually, so that makes it even easier. And I'm gonna use the watercolor pencils this time around. And see what we can get here. All right, now this does have a smooth side and a kind of textured side. We're gonna go on the smooth side. This paper looks like it is cut to just a little over five by five. So we are actually gonna use our little mini Misty here to stamp it out. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm actually going to stamp it on this side. Oh, got to take out our foam pad because we're using a red rubber stamp. almost forgot about that. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to use some of the VersaFine Claire ink because you can um, watercolor over this once it's heat set and it's going to give us a nice black impression. take a couple of inkings for this to come out just because it is textured paper and it's a little harder to get an impression on those one more and we should be pretty good. image. Let me clean my stamp up and move it out of the way. Actually, I'm going to leave it on the Misty for now just in case we have to restamp it later. Just leave it like that. Okay, I'm going to take the heat tool to this just to set it. work on is the background. So I have here some Distress Oxide in Tumbled Glass and Cracked Pistachio. Let me grab a darker blue. Okay. Some Salty Ocean and some Blueprint Sketch. So I want to make this kind of watery background. So I'm going to do the smush method and it's really easy to do. We're just going to take these colors and I'm using the distress oxides because they're going to have kind of this muted pastel look once they're done. Okay, 
Okay, we'll do some of these and then we'll add the darker color in a moment. And we're gonna spray that with our Distress Sprayer. And I'm going to start, like I really want it over on this side of the paper. So I'm just going to put that down. And it's okay if some of our little critters turn blue because we can color over them. But we're already getting this cool watery effect. I'm gonna dry this a little bit. some more color and that's what's cool about the oxides is you can continue to add color and it doesn't get muddy it just layers on top of each other beautifully Ooh, I'm really liking how this is looking Do want to water this down a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of the blueprint sketch off to the side here. Just to get a little darker color. I don't want too much of that though. I kind of just want that really on the edges. giving a neat effect. Now we have a little bit of everything. I'm going to dry this again. Do a little bit on the edges here probably cut those off but just in case I don't I don't want to leave those white take a little bit of my distress sprayer and just spray some kind of chunky droplets on there a second. Oops. Clean this up. Very, very easy to do with the mat. I love this glass mat. I mean, my desk is glass, but I've always used like some kind of a plastic mat over it. And I just I love this mat. Okay, now I'm going to take the paper towel and dab those drops off. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. All right, I'm just gonna completely dry it before we go in with the color pencils.
looks pretty cool. All right, now I'm gonna go in with a water brush. Let me grab another paper towel here. Put that off to the side. And this water brush is one that I had loaded up with some Arteza Micas, but the Micas weren't working and it was just getting clogged up. So I'm wondering if I can get anything to come out of it. And no, it's not working. Okay, I'm just gonna go and dump that out. I think it's just too fine. All right, so let me grab my two fine tip. These are both Tim Holtz fine tip water brush. There we go, Ranger water brushes. We have water in those. All right, so we're just gonna start by laying down some color. And whenever you don't know what color, you can always go to Google and reference it. I like having the actual um, uh, rubber stamp, um, I don't know what to call this. It's not a case example image there we go printed image out because this gives some really good color references so I will have that out and let's just start coloring I'm going to start with now if they have like this sandy ground we can definitely do that I'm actually going to probably put some sand on here so I'm not going to worry too much about that but let's start with some of these shells that are down here And again, these are the Arteza watercolor pencils. Now, how these are different from the regular watercolor pencils is these do kind of go down a little um, thicker, a little chalkier, I would say, until you get water added to them. And then they do have a little brush right here, a little paintbrush, so that you know that they are watercolor color pencils. So you can use them as regular watercolor, or I'm sorry, as regular color pencils or as watercolor pencils just keep in mind you cannot um can't use these with gamzol like you can the regular wax based pencils that's one of the reasons i grabbed the watercolor paper because i wanted this to be able to take all of this water in for us not to lose any of the paper by it pilling up or anything that's pretty good um i don't know what color sand dollars are I guess they're kind of a, a lighter sandy color they're really light aren't they Let's see if we can get this cream color to work might be too light but that's okay because our image is under the sea Okay, that was burnt ochre on that one. I don't want to use burnt ochre again. Actually, that one was cinnamon. I want a little bit lighter color. There we go. Ginger. I like to put the color down and go in one at a time and um, put the water on and adjust it. You can certainly go in and color the whole image and then go in and add the water, but by doing it this way, it allows the previous image to dry, like that's dry now. So if you have to color anything next to it, um, because it's dry, you don't have to worry about those colors kind of running together. But let's say you were in a hurry and you only wanted to do like lay the color down first and then go in later and do the water coloring. You could certainly do that. You just need to be a little more careful when you're um, putting the water down. That's all. This is experiment green.
is pear green. orange now there are some non-traditional images in here there is like a daisy here a peony here a rose here you know the artist was being very whimsical with this so it's a lot of fun paint it any way you want imagine that it's in a an aquarium um, you know, this is Orchid Purple. You know, we've all gone to state aquariums and they put all kinds of funky stuff inside there, like little sand castles and things like that. So use your imagination. The more water you use, the more the pigments will move, the lighter the color will get. The less water you use, um, the more concentrated it will be in color and, um, you know, it'll look less watercolored and more color penciled. It's up to you. I really want to kind of focus on keeping those colors, but I really want a watercolored look, so I put a lot of color down. And when I put the water on it, it's not going to move it a whole bunch, but it'll still look watercolored. Well, I hope it will anyway. Any place you have too much water, like I have here on my little guy, just take a little paper towel, dab that off, and it'll lift some of that water up. Let's see if we can get some yellow to show up on here. This is lemon yellow. I think I'll put a little bit of orange in with that. some sunflower yellow for Daisy down here. So do some red for our rose. Some more green back in. This is mint green.
that's like a hot pink color. What color was that? It's called Crimson Red, but it's more like a fuchsia. That actually turned out pretty nice. brown espresso brown on the top of this flower I think we'll use the same espresso brown just to give some shading down here where our sand is and then like a nice coral for this shell here Okay, that looks pretty good. Did I miss anything? I think I want to put some more green in here, like a lime green. Lime green. I want to just kind of more color there. That way there's no stark white. And if you have any white spots you don't like, you can always go back in with the Distress Ink. A little splotch of that. Just fill in any of those areas that you don't like the white spots. Okay, now you guys know me, I can't go without sparkle, so we're going to spritz some sparkle on here. And then I'll find a wonderful sentiment. I think I'm going to leave it as a 5x5 five five square card. I don't do that often enough. Um, you know, a lot of times I cut my cards to standard A2 size, but I think I'm going to leave this as a 5x5 five five card. Let me spritz it with some shimmer. But that was really easy to do. I love all the bright colors in there. I love the background. That really surprised me how well that came out. I'm going to use some sheer shimmer spritz here. Give it some glitter there. I'm also going to take my shimmer pen. Give 
putting some big chunky drops of that on there. All right, so that's gonna look pretty cool. We can dab up any extra water. I'm gonna do a little bit more droplets because I like the droplets look. So I'm gonna squeeze gently. That gives us big drops. There we go. Let those sit for a second to absorb into the paper. And then lift it back up. And we get more of those water spots. And with the shimmer on there, that looks really cool. You see that? So once again, the name of the stamp is Land and Sea. It is from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. Here you go. And again, it comes with that beautiful sentiment. Like I said, really encouraging stamp for what's going on right now in the world. And hopefully this will put a smile on your face. Give it a try if this is a technique you haven't done before. It's a lot of fun. I will link everything down in the description for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you click the um, bottom right corner, there's going to be a little uh, icon that comes up. and click that and subscribe and then click the bell and you'll get notifications every time I post a new video. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.